Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of our new series, Auditors Empowered. In this series, we will be talking about challenges in audit and how tools and technology can help overcome these challenges by presenting you real-life examples from our power users and their experiences. To kick off the first episode, we have Amanda and Matt joining from MMP. It is useful to mention that this is a pre-recorded session and is available to you on demand. Thank you for tuning in and hope you enjoyed this webinar. So let's get started. Before I dive in, I quickly introduce myself. My name is Hannah and I'm product marketing team lead here at Data Snipper. I'm very excited to host today's session and welcome our amazing guests. Today, we will cover key challenges faced in audit and how implementing Data Snipper at MMP helped overcome these challenges. Afterwards, Amanda and Matt will give best practices on how they leverage Data Snipper within their audit teams and the impact they made by sharing some metrics on time savings. Finally, since they have been having such a successful journey, we of course want to ask them some tips for you from auditors for auditors. Let's get started. So welcome Amanda and Matt. They are both power users of Data Snipper and have been using implementing the tool since day one. I will let them quickly introduce themselves, but before that, I want to quickly highlight that Amanda won the award Audit MVP of the Year. So what does that mean? This award is given to a high achiever, an impactful auditor who's always looking beyond the horizon, who sees success as their own responsibility while supporting others to reach new levels and meet their full potential. Congratulations once again. And of course, we're super excited to be here with Matt, who co-led the Data Super Implementation Project with Amanda. Well, guys, I will leave the stage to you. Please give the audience a short introduction of yourselves and a fun fact about yourselves. Hi, I'm Amanda Fanning, and I'm a designated professional at MNP, and I work in insurance services. What does that mean? Uh, I primarily audit uh, larger enterprises and public companies. I guess a fun fact about me uh, is I have a twin sister, and we're not identical, but we do look almost exactly the same. But lucky for me, she doesn't actually work here. Uh, she doesn't work in accounting, so we're competitive in our daily lives, but not at work. Hello, my name is Matthew Bavalacqua. I'm a manager at MNP in our Winnipeg office. I primarily work on large audits and public companies as well. A fun fact about me is I did an inventory count in Canada's high Arctic. I had to count 20 items and I was there for five days. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds both like fun facts, guys. Thank you for joining us once again. Okay, guys, let's dive right in. What were the main challenges you identified? biggest challenge that you would identify is change resistance and change fatigue. It's really easy for people to get stuck in their ways and to be constantly be doing what they did last year, kind of what we call in the auditing world, Sally, same as last year. To implement something like Data Snipper can be challenging if they don't actually see the benefit. So we're always dealing with ever-increasing regulatory demands and tight deadlines as auditors. That's something that isn't going to change. So we have to find ways of becoming more efficient. So using tools like Data Snipper is how we do that. So that was kind of our challenge. It's how do we get the buy-in so that we can become more efficient in our files? Sounds very interesting, guys. So why did you choose Data Snipper? What was the wow moment of Data Snipper for you? Oh, I can cover this one. So <laughs> I was our original Data Snipper champion in our office. And as a manager, it's important to point out that I don't necessarily do a lot of substantive testing anymore, but I watched a demo of document matching and it was extremely powerful. You're talking about a task that could take somebody hours now taking minutes. So as soon as I saw this, I almost had it in my mind, like I can't be a dinosaur, become extinct here. Like, What do I do? So I tapped somebody like Amanda, who I know does do a lot of substantive testing. Then that's where we, well, Amanda mostly developed the training package that we used to train our staff. So you mean by training, I assume it's like implementation initiatives that you guys decided on to take to really show the tool among your teams and uh, basically have them use it like you guys are doing, right? What were the main initiatives you placed? So we kind of took a three-pronged approach to this and it was 
educate, mandate, motivate. So the education piece was a crucial first step because we felt it really wasn't that fair to tell people that they had to use Data Snipper and other technologies if we weren't giving them the resources on how to use them. So the education uh, took place as a mandatory training session that I led, and we basically got everyone in a room. Uh, we have a pretty big office, so it had to happen over a couple sessions. But I sat up at the front of the room showing demonstrations of data snipper use cases, such as document matching, table snip, financial statement suite, and other technologies. So everyone could watch it live, understand how they could use it, and see it in practice. Instead of kind of just showing this is what the tool is capable of, I was showing real files that, that we work on across multiple different niches. So everyone felt like there was a use case for them. Exactly. And the top tools that we utilize are document matching. So you're talking about heavy substantive testing. So tasks, again, like I mentioned, that would take you hours are now taking minutes. We use table snap. So our practice of a lot of compilations, which would be heavy on doing bank synoptics that would be manually done. You know, somebody keying in a bank transaction a thousand times in Excel. We can use table snip. You're extracting that data again in minutes. And then financial statement suite. This is something that we actually made mandatory in our region at MMP. We are seeing far better quality financial statements coming to the managers and the partners. So we're also seeing that our junior staff are actually developing an understanding of financial statements sooner because mm -hmm. they're going through the process that they have to go through with the financial statement suite and understanding, you know, how do the notes tie to the face of the statements? That's something that we didn't see before. So it's kind of a neat development. This is so interesting. It seems like you put a lot of effort and time into these trainings. I was wondering, what was the reaction of your team members? Um, overwhelmingly positive, I would say. Uh, I think people understood how much time it took to put all of this together. And I enjoyed doing it. This is a very exciting part of my job. So yes, it took a lot of time, but I think it was worth it. And people really appreciated not only the, the training that took place, but I made a resource guide as well with kind of step-by-step -step instructions to different uses of data snipper and other tech, and also compiled a list of resource videos that people could watch. We have some internal learning that's generated at MNP, so people felt supported. We also made ourselves available for questions because at the very beginning, it can be overwhelming when all of this information is just thrown at you and you're expected to just you know, implemented across all your files. It's not the most reasonable expectation. So I think people were a little bit, we had some change resistors at the beginning. Some people were a little tired of all the new things that MNP is constantly doing, but the buy-in, we eventually got there. Yeah, and an important aspect of this is also tone at the top. So we had the support to do all this, and then we did a presentation to the partnership. So it's not the same presentation <laughs> that we gave staff, but it was more high level, like here's the efficiencies of data snippers. And here are the dollar savings that we get. <laughs> so once we had the buy-in of the partnership, well, then it was easy to have them say, okay, we need to be using these tools in our files. So it became less of a choice for staff as well. Your team must be thanking you right now, honestly. I also see this very creative, also a proactive approach of gamification. Could you maybe talk a bit more about that? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So like I said, it was an educate, mandate, motivate approach. So education piece we talked about, the mandating was just highly encouraging the usage of all of these tools, slash some of them like financial statements, we said, you have to. For the motivation, where we were kind of getting a little bit lost was we didn't know how to bridge the gap between, okay, you know how to use it, but how can I motivate you to use it? Because by telling someone, hey, you can do this task faster, which means I'm going to give you more work, is not motivating inherently. So we had to come up with a different way of doing that. And that's where the gamifying data snipper kind of came into play. And we ran a contest over busy season where every week uh, you could enter to win gift cards if you use data snipper. So it was a very simple form that just asked you, what did you use data snipper for? You know, was it table snip, text snip, financial statement suite? What client did you use it on? Type of engagement? Because we wanted to gather some of this info. And then the key piece was estimated time savings. So when you filled out the form, you had to guess how much time you saved. And people were generally fairly good at estimating this. And then each entry, you could win a gift card. We ran it for 10 weeks. It created some friendly competition within the office because we kind of pitted the different floors against each other as well. 
because we have three main floors here. So they were not only competing against their peers on their floor by floor as well for a gift card to some kind of more trendy restaurants in the area and things like that. Yeah, and an important factor, each team that, that had the most entries won a pizza party at the end of each month. So you were kind of empowering each team to be like, okay, if you're not using it, like you should be using it. I want pizza. Everybody likes pizza. So it was an easy motivator for us. Uh, and then a very important key piece on our metrics was the time savings. Like that was kind of our claim to fame within the firm. It's like, okay, what are they doing in Winnipeg? This is the amount of time they're saying that they could save on files. How do we implement that across the firm? Yeah, I could see your team members helping each other out just to get that pizza party going on. That's yeah. amazing, guys. <laughs> Another aspect that we should probably say is we, in the background, could see data of, of how many times people were you know, creating workbooks in data server. And by the time we got to the 10th week, we saw that entries to the contest were going down, but then our usage in the background was going up. So people just decided, okay, well, you know, this is making my job easier. I'm just going to use the tool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sick of pizza. So. Yeah, they, they didn't, they didn't <laughs> get of the pizza as much anymore, which was kind of the whole goal. We thought, you know, once people start using it in any demo that I've ever shown, the reaction is always overwhelmingly positive. And wow, why haven't I heard about this yet? I wish I could just talk to every single person that works at MNP and convince them. But we found that once you show people how to use it and they use it once themselves, they're completely sold. Yeah. So loving the gamifications and all the initiatives that you guys put there at MMP, have you been able to measure data snippers' effectiveness within your teams? I guess we could say you did. Could you tell us more about it? Yeah, absolutely. We, we definitely focused on our region. So the big factor here was we had data to say, okay, how many times were we creating workbooks? You know, how many times were we using document matching with different functions prior to implementing our training or doing the gamification? So we did that measurement before, and then we did one very recently. So as you can see, we increased 236% in our region alone. This is crazy, guys. Congratulations, truly. It's amazing. And would you say, just out of curiosity, what would be your favorite data super feature? I see a lot of mentioning of document matching, but you know, maybe you have a different opinion now. I mean, I would say that document matching is probably has the biggest wow factor for me, but I think financial savings suite would be like a very close number two. Mm-hmm. And as Matt kind of described earlier, just the quality of financial statements that we're seeing now, because the tool almost forces you to look at things that you probably should always have been looking at, but the internal consistency, especially, it's a good teaching tool to show our team members, okay, if you have a number on the face of the statements and you have a supporting note, you know, it's supposed to provide more information. So just having that um, higher quality, you're saving time. So hard not to love that one. Yeah, I set financial statement suite. That just makes my job more efficient because I'm looking at financial statements and they're actually clean versus, you know, having to spend a lot of time going through the notes saying, okay, we didn't tie anything out here. You're just seeing much better quality financial statements. Our team members, on the other hand, would would obviously say document matching. Anyone that works in audit that has to do a lot of sample size calculations and substantive testing, it's document matching all the way. I have to say my favorite feature is also document matching. Every <laughs> time I see that match all rows and that thing just going in seconds, it's amazing. It's amazing. Okay, well, this was very insightful. Thank you so much for your insights, guys. As such pioneers in the audit space, are there any tips or words of advice you'd perhaps have for all your fellow auditors watching this right now? I'd say my biggest tip would be don't be afraid of change. You don't want to be a dinosaur and you don't want to be left in the dust. There's so much technology out there and it's aimed to augment your job. It's not aimed to automate anything. The robots, I don't think, are going to take over accounting jobs. There's too much professional judgment in accounting. But instead of resisting it and being scared, be open to learning. Yeah, absolutely. I know five years ago when I was doing substantive testing, you know, and I was punching things in a calculator. 
it is crazy once I saw that demo. As soon as I saw that, I bought in. And it's like, here is the future of auditing. You know, we have to be adopting these tools. You know, you don't want to be left in the dust. Yeah, and it gives you so much more time to focus on where the risk is in your file. And, you know, you can spend your time writing interesting accounting memos instead of vouching, <laughs> uh, vouching invoices, which to me is exciting. Yeah. Maybe not for everybody. So a quote that we were utilizing when we uh, did a lot of our training is, AI won't replace accountants. Accountants who use AI will replace those who don't. Well, thank you so much for the tips, guys. I'm sure your fellow auditors will truly appreciate it. And maybe a final question. What does Data Stopper look like at MMP in the future? Any projects uh, to increase implementation? Yeah, definitely, for sure. So we actually just got back from kind of an East and West Canada tour where we trained individuals from each of the regions in different methodology and technology concepts that we at the firm are calling insight driven assurance so each of these individuals are insight driven assurance leaders so what does that mean you're kind of at the intersection of methodology and technology the firm has a lot of technology like data snipper regionally we just implement that technology differently and some regions buy in some regions are kind of slower to buy in so the concept that we helped develop were these individuals that will go back to their regions, kind of implement these tools firm-wide so that we're gaining all the efficiencies that we need to using technology like Data Snipper. Yeah, the goal when we were creating this course and we worked with a lot of different departments at the MNC to execute it, but we wanted to replicate the Winnipeg success story. So we had about 40 leaders total, 20 in the East, 20 in the West. And we put them through two and a half days of training where they had to listen to the two of us and one other um, individual who works at MNP. And like Matt said, a lot of technology focus, but also methodology, because that's pretty important in accounting. And we had some focus on efficiencies. There was some brainstorming because it's almost like all of our regions operate like franchises because we are a big organization, but we're just across Canada. So what might work in Toronto might not work for Winnipeg, might not work in Vancouver. So it was a lot of um, idea sharing, but just with the whole idea of this insight driven assurance and not let's do things how we always did them. Let's challenge the way we always did them and think how we can be more efficient. I'm sure they will be as successful as the Winnipeg office guys. They had you. Well, thank you so much once again for joining in our today's session. If you want to know more about Data Snipper and how it can help you in your procedures, feel free to book a demo with our sales team. If you want to find out about our upcoming events and webinars, feel free to check our resources hub on, the, on our website. I'd like to thank once more our amazing guests, Amanda and Matt, for joining us today and sharing very interesting insights and metrics into their success. Amanda's winner speech of audit awards will be available on Data Snippers LinkedIn, so make sure you follow us on LinkedIn. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you soon. Have a nice day. Once again, thank you, Amanda and Matt. Thanks thank for you. having us.